Hello, welcome to the final session of Painting for Beginners. Today we're going to be looking at using acrylic paints to paint a still life. Still life is a useful um, thing to explore when you're trying to develop and hone your acrylic painting skills because you can just use whatever you can find around the house. Um, one thing I would just say though is pick something that um, isn't too difficult. Don't go for something that's really hard to draw and you're going to struggle a lot. Go for things which you feel fairly confident in tackling. So I'm sticking to some um, peppers because it's lovely rounded shapes, but that obviously if I don't get it quite right, who's to know? And this wonderful wrinkly texture um, of a red cabbage cut in half. So I'm going to be playing around with some ideas for a composition with those in a few minutes. But first of all, um, let's look at some examples of still life from art history. So when people think of still life, they often think of the old masters, uh, this very smoothly painted and um, glossy look with a lot of darkness in there, a lot of, a lot of use of black and a lot of shadow. Um, personally, I find this a little bit off-putting. Um, what I want to do with acrylics is be a bit more playful, um, play and a little bit more colourful too. So let's have a look at some examples of how um, early 20th century artists broke this sort of mould of classical painting. So I expect everybody will be familiar with Van Gogh uh, and his sunflowers. Perhaps the most important thing to look at is the wonderful uh, marks that he makes, the, the very bold brush strokes that define the texture in the, the petals. But also, you know, the really, really bright colours. And I think if you look carefully, you can just see a little bit of blue coming through um, behind that yellow. We'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Here's an example of still life from Cezanne. And with Cezanne, you've got these very bold sort of planes of colour, um, almost quite blocky. He does use a little bit of black just as a sort of accent, but he's using um, darker colours to darken off and create shadows rather than um, using black as a first resort. Very much influenced by the Impressionists. Taking it a bit further, Matisse, and here we have a really vibrant, playful colour. The still life, in actual fact, is almost just a jumping off point for playing around with colour and pattern in his work. And taking that to an even further extreme, this is George Brack, um, a, a collaborator with Picasso, where his still life um, has become um, virtually abstract. You can just about make out a bunch of grapes here, uh, maybe some hints of a newspaper with a print, um, some bottles, and so on. Um, one of my favourite well-known artists who tackled still life is George O'Keefe. These wonderfully vibrant um, colours in these pieces of work, um, zooming in very closely on flowers. So just looking at the very, very detail. Um, there is a video of me producing a zoomed in um, still life painting uh, on our website if you look in the abstract art courses and it's called zooming in and in that I look at um, lanterns like these laying them together um, coming up with an interesting composition of just very small details this is the one that I go for and if I just show you the final result, I just need to zoom the camera out a little bit so that you can see that fully. It's also worth just searching on the internet for uh, still life um, examples. I put in still life um, vibrant colours and came up with with lots of examples of lesser known people. So these really strong, bold colours. I like these strong colours in these pairs. Look how in this pair you've got yellow um, 
red and purple in this one you've got yellow um, orange yellow cadmium yellow two different greens you've got a, a purpley blue you've got this red here such a range of colors and yet they work fantastically um, here's another example funny enough of a pair doing something similar you can sort of see the way the paint has been dragged and scraped and scumbled to much more interesting textures going on there here's one which is just a little bit more um, sort of graphic working with a grid and flattening everything and playing around with um, planes of color so almost interest um, in oh, what's the word inspired by Mondrian that sort of blocky sort of squareness and moving on I found some really interesting much more graphic ones where the color is laid quite flatly but with lots of marks over the top and these bold strong lines these this one the color is very very flat indeed but lovely sort of playfulness of pattern there's no need to make something you know really blended you can play with quite strong flat color and acrylics is very good for that but the favorite i found uh, was this one i really like what's going on here i quite like the uh, graphic quality of it but i like these blended colors on the inside so i'm going to put that to one side and use that um have it in my head um, for inspiration and these really really vibrant colors is what i really want to explore the vibrant colors um, in some of those examples inspire my choice of objects to some extent so I've got a strong range of colors. I've got um, yellow and purple, green and red. And these are opposites. So I'm trying, I'm thinking about putting them next to each other. And these are what are called thumbnail sketches. They're rough little sketches trying to work out what would be the best arrangement of, um, of these. Um, so this is my first arrangement. And I thought it looked a little bit... Um, a little bit boring a little bit still um, so i tried just squashing them up a little bit and i quite like that but when i swapped over put the yellow here and the red there and brought them really together i thought that really just worked nicely as a composition and it is a bit down to personal taste so but you play around do some quick sketches it don't have to be very good i've just used um, some colored pencils trying to think about um the sort of relationship of you know of your objects how you want to put them together and here i started to then explore that um, with some watercolor um, thinking about what colors i might use in different areas and that was okay but i want to try a different colored background um, so i'm going to do something very similar again It's only the background I want to change on this uh, new study where I, I've tried a warm background of uh, red with some white over the top of it. Uh, it's something called underpainting where you put a colour, definite colour in the background. You might hide it to a large extent, but it sort of warms the picture up in this case. Uh, I want to try it, what would happen with a colder colour. So I'm going to try blue in the background. Um, but before I do that let me just talk about the sort of colors that I've done in here and this is, again is a thumbnail sketch so I've done it with um, watercolors in this case the the bright and vibrant and the linky watercolors um, I've done that it with those because it's quick I'm just trying to work things out but um, when it comes to the red pepper I've used ultramarine to darken it now, if you remember, the red and the ultramarine are next to each other in the color wheel uh, in terms of making good purples. So they're very good for making purples. So they mix very well together. Um, in the green pepper, I've used cyan and a turquoise color um, to make it to darken off. In the yellow pepper, I've used green to darken off. So trying to just shift a little bit along the um the color spectrum in um the 
The red cabbage, on the other hand, because these are very strong, these stripes, I've used uh, a combination of purple and turquoise, a little bit further apart, to try and create a bit more vibrant look. And then in the foreground, I've done something which you might find a little bit unusual. I've used orange and purple, which are very distant in the colour um, thing, but they actually mix surprisingly well in terms of creating browns. I'm using purple for the shadows. The two next to each other look really, really vibrant. And that's what I'm going for, is a really strong, vibrant sort of colouring. So I'll be doing something similar with those. Um, but first of all, I will be doing uh, the background. So there's that strong um, ultramarine colour in the background, but I don't want that to dominate. So I'm actually going to be painting over the top of it um, with white paint to actually to hide it. So it just sort of peeks through and I'll paint it on quite thickly and just see what sort of marks it makes. Remember, this is all just um, experiments at this stage just trying to work out the sort of colours I want to use in different parts. So while our background's drying, I'm going to start working on um, the peppers. And what I'm going to be doing, you'll notice, is working um, wet in wet. So comparing these two studies, um, I quite like both backgrounds, but on balance, I think this one brings out the colours uh, much better. That's perhaps just a little bit too close to the colours in the red cabbage. So I think this is the colour arrangement that I'm going to go with. So now that's decided, I have my composition and my colour arrangement. What I now need to decide is what would be the best techniques um, for painting the different areas. Uh, and in order to decide that, I'm going to do some experiments. Just a quick recap on um, some of the techniques from last time. So there's blending using water, there's blending acrylics dry, there's blending using stippling, dragging with a card, dragging, uh, applying with a, a palette knife, working alongside um, a stencil, Scraffito, where you put um, paint over the top of um, a dry colour and then scratch back into it. And then, of course, using things like pastels or pencils in combination. Um, I'm going to try some of those um, for some of the parts of, uh, of my um, still life study. So I'm going to do a few experiments. My first experiments are about the the background and the foreground and which colour to put on first as an underpainting. So um, with the background, I want that strong red to just peek through an otherwise quite pale uh, background. So I want to try a couple of things 
for applying it to make it a little bit more interesting and a bit more textural. So the first thing I'm going to try is applying colour straight over with a part knife and dragging it so just a little bit comes through. It's quite nice. The second experiment I want to try is dragging it with a card. Where's my card gone? Here it is. So I've got my card. I'm going to apply some paint on the edge and I'm going to drag it hmm which one do I prefer I think I prefer that one okay now in terms of the foreground i'm wondering whether it would be better if i put purple as the background and then apply orange over the top or do it the other way around so let's just try it i'm going to try applying some quite neat I'll mix it thoroughly just letting it sort of mix a little bit on its own neat acrylic over the top not covered too badly at all and I'm going to try scratching back in a little bit of scraffito to reveal the purple underneath it's quite nice it's perhaps not as as vibrant as I'd like it so now let's try applying the purple over the top so using ultramarine and magenta it could be crimson it's getting it mixed on my palette the color I want and let's just try I should use a fine brush really shouldn't I just sort of putting on those sort of lines that we get with the grain a bit of shadow too As in the shadow underneath the uh, peppers. Ah, uh, yes, that's much, much clearer, much better. Uh, the scraffito didn't really quite work. So that's, I think it's that for the background, that for the foreground. Now a couple of experiments for the face tools themselves. I've already decided um, for all the peppers to put <clears throat> a lovely lemon yellow in the background to make them really sort of uh, warm and, and pop out and I've just got to decide how I'm actually going to, going to paint them so I think the first thing I'm going to think about the red pepper and I'm going to try working in a quite a sort of blocky way and blending the sort of colors with the brush quite boldly straight into each other using the paint really quite thick Quite interesting. Also trying this one, literally laying much larger areas of colour on, keeping a little bit sort of definite and blocky, and then blending with a little bit of water. Hmm. I think for the peppers, I actually prefer that slightly smoother sort of look. Um, one thing I might consider, though, is maybe the reflective highlights that you get 
using a little bit of yeah something like that the palette knife just to sort of put those highlights on okay now with the red cabbage um, I've got a couple of different ideas. One is to start with its base colour, then try putting white and, and blue over the top. The other is to contrast it with the yellow and use um, a pale blue so it just looks colder. So I'm going to try both out. And with this, because it's quite fiddly, it's going to be much more about um, brushwork. So trying the fine brush. Just sort of imposing those sort of wiggles over the top. Not copying the thing exactly, I'm just trying to get an idea of it. Let's try putting the, the white in between. Hmm, quite like that look. Let's try sent working on the purple background Yes, I can see straight away that 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 the purple background is less successful. So I'm going to go with this one. So through those experiments, it's enabled me to make um, decisions about how I'm going to paint things. I haven't decided everything. I'm going to leave a few things to sort of improvise um, as I sort of get into the painting. Um, but now I'm going to get the basic background washes in. Well, I'm going to sketch it out first, and I'm going to be working on a slightly large scale on A3, uh, just so I've got a bit more room for things like a part knife and so on. Um, and uh, I'm going to be using uh, a, a, a thin white card. So here is my still life arrangement, and notice that um, it's lit from one side. Um, I just used my mobile phone, I stuck it in a... Um, in a cup I put the light the torch on and shone it across just to get a little bit more definition of light on one side and dark on the other which will make it a lot easier when you're uh, painting and I've just sketched out the basic shapes of the peppers and the red cabbage plus the shadow I think there's a couple of bits that might need a bit of adjusting like there but that's fine <coughs> now I'm going to put the um, the background washes on. So there is my underpainting. Um, I did say washes, it isn't all washes. Um, I've done a wash in the background in red and a wash in yellow on the peppers because they're going to be covered over. But because a lot of the colour on these two areas will show through, um, I've put those on a little bit thicker, so just a little bit of water, and I've had a little bit of variation to creep in by not completely mixing the colours. But you can see how bright it's going to be with that contrast of the lighter colour. So I'm going to work my way through it. The first thing I think I'll do is work on that background. my background um, 
blocked in it's still a little bit wet which is why it's shiny but now i'm going to start working on the peppers so i'm going to take a very straightforward method a just very slightly damp brush and if you remember what i'm going to do is get the color on in big blocks i'm kind of following the shapes of the uh, the bulges of the pepper keep my brush strokes going in that sort of direction a bit more water just to keep it moving nicely a bit more in there to work really quite quickly because the acrylic does dry quite quick Lots of colour in. And now, looking at where the darker areas are, I'm going to apply some ultramarine quite boldly. Straight in, straight on top. It's quite dark all the way up here. A little bit on there. locking in those darker areas and then if you remember rightly what i chose to do was to blend with a little bit of water so whoops too much there Finally, just a little bit of highlights with some white. So it's actually put on nice and thick.
that's the peppers reasonably well painted and now I'm going to move on to the purple cabbage So it's quite an impressionistic um, look at that cabbage, but I really quite enjoyed just dragging those paints together. Um, and now uh, working on the foreground, I'm taking the purple and putting in the shadows. And there we have my um, finished painting. It's not perfect. I could fuss over it a lot more. I could have been more careful with some of the details, but it was fun to do. And I got to practice and play with uh, lots of different techniques. And that's what I'd recommend you did. Um, in a few minutes, there's going to be a slideshow showing um, some students work, painting from still lives. Um, and also there is going to be information about other courses uh, on our website that you could take if you want to take um, painting further. Um, I hope you enjoyed the course. If you do, please do fill in a feedback form on our website. Bye-bye.